Alright, so I've just realised that this lens <laughs> uh, is broken. Uh, the aperture does not work. So it might say that it's on f22, but it has zero effect. So right now I have to use a shutter speed of 200, no, 800, just to compensate for the mass amount of light. And it's probably overexposed now anyway. <laughs> Rubbish. So this, this episode, this concept is really based around um, insights into a photographer, a professional photographer, um, one that isn't like uh, a Charles Javis. Uh, Charles, 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 Charles Javis, Javis, Charles, Charles Javis, Javis guy, that guy. Good. Good. Alright, so we're gonna have a look at Carmen's gear now. <laughs> Check out what's in my bag. This is my super, super basic kit. So if I go somewhere and I know that I'm only shooting natural light, um, this is what I'll bring just my camera and my lenses. My D800, a dispatch strap, which is awesome because you can just like remove it if I'm on tripod, it's not like getting in the way. Um, so my D800, Sigma 514. Beautiful, yes, yummy. it's the art lens. I'm like opposite to you. I'm not a techie person. I'm just like I have what I have is what works for me, and I don't have time <laughs> to like keep up with all the newest stuff. And we're like, oh, did you hear about the newest camera? I'm like, nope. So here's my 3514. Um, very much considering this is actually really sharp too. Of my Nikon lenses, this is the sharpest. And then I have this 8514, um, mm. which I am considering switching to Sigma but mm. uh, kind of unnecessary, oh, you know. <laughs> and my memory cards. Sweet. And I do this, I don't know, I'm sure, I'm sure other people do this, but like, if you touch this, and then when they're used, we flip them over. Around, this yeah. is just a general thing. I'm sure you guys do it too. So we're gonna go around and just uh, take some like casual photos and see what we can make out of this stuff. Yeah, awesome. let's do it. what it took to get there and the lifestyle that that entailed it didn't really appeal to me anymore and then just coincidentally at the same time I reconnected with a high school friend and he was sharing his photos on Flickr and I was like can you show me how to use a camera like just for fun we went to a park he showed me how to use an SLR on manual and I was like cool and he's like well it's an extra body so you just take it and borrow it and then I was like reading a lot of blogs and just trying to learn as much as possible about photography I signed up for an adult like an evening class at like Santa Monica High School and like their black and white dark room a fashion photography blog that I was following posted that she was looking for an intern and I applied and I got the job. I was like super like my portfolio that I shared with her was my Flickr account that had photos <laughs> of like flowers and dogs. Put my bag down now. I really like 
to keep my shots clean and uncluttered or if, if I have to shoot an environmental portrait and it's a really cluttered space, my mind is bent on like finding the cleanest area possible. It's like the equivalent of shooting in a studio except you have like really interesting gradients on the angular mm. you know walls where you know it fades from like different values of, of gray and white and then the hard light just provides some direction. The texture of the floor, it's like brushed cement, but if you look, like like I veer away from that stuff. I was about to say crap. It's not crap, it's just like, <laughs> like it's really busy. But like look at the reflection on the floor of like the color and stuff and the texture. I don't know, that's really cool to me. Dorky, the equivalent of like nerding out on tech stuff is just nerding out on like texture. <laughs> I would say the biggest hurdle that I've had to overcome, which I'm still trying to get through, is moving from Hong Kong to New York, and that was a conscious decision. That was a decision that I made because I feel like, like I felt like I was becoming complacent with my work. I, I knew what I signed up for, but I didn't know the extent of competitiveness uh. that that industry is. There are a ton of talented people, and so I think one big thing I've learned is it's as much about business as it is about the craft. So you are marketing, you are doing accounting, client management, you're designing your website, and you're doing social media marketing. Mm -hmm. Set up your CRMs, figure out your data backup, figure out your naming system, your keywording. Like if you get all that figured out in the beginning, then you're not going to be screwed. I have to push myself to, to create better work because everyone is so talented and you really can't slack, you know? On the same note, you have to work just as hard to market your work because even if you're doing really well, you still have to market. They might be looking for a photographer and you just happen to send something to them last week or you just happen to send them an email today. But had you not been in touch with them for three months, they won't think of you. Really? Wow. Maybe if you're on their wall, like, mm. you know, maybe if their post, your postcard is on their wall, but mm. you really have to be like sending regular stuff and for them to like see your work and be like, oh yeah, you know, they're oh, reminded okay. of you. Okay. Okay. Well, like, let's see, come over here and walk like from here to there and you'll see the light. Yeah. And it gets super hot. I'll see that and I'll be like, oh crap, stand right here. Like, I guess I want to stand here and like you can see it yep. bouncing into my face. Exactly, that, exactly. that's a good point. See that shadow? Mm -hmm. you can... so, so if I'm shooting a portrait and and like I'm looking at the subject and I'm the subject, a lot of times I'll like look at people's faces and I'm not actually looking at them, I'm just looking at the light on their face. <laughs> or I do this to see like, so I see on my face, you see like the light and you can figure out where it's coming from. Or like, move them so that it's like on them or I don't know. Yeah, so like hard light is really, I find it kind of hard to work with. I'll either backlight with it or I'll look for what it's hitting and then use that to bounce it so then it's soft on the subject. So for example, you see this coming in. I wouldn't necessarily put the subject here because it becomes super harsh on their skin, but I would either shoot from this side so that they're backlit and then like come on this side so you can see like the light on my hand. So it's backlit, right? Like you see the edge light in the back of my hand. You're like, oh, shadows are really dark. Okay, so then you get the wall and then like watch how like, see that wall basically fills my hand. Yeah. I'm very uh, resourceful with the environmental yeah, the natural existing lighting. light. Yeah, yeah. I would say as much as you can assist because I I learned a lot through assisting. So and I totally would still assist certain people, and that's what I love about assisting is observing other photographers' work and kind of picking up on things that you like that they did or trying those things out, whether it be like lighting or the way that they direct people. Everyone does it differently, right? Like every Everyone brings a different energy to the set. Should we take a portrait of you? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. Okay. So I'm gonna get a portrait taken of me. Where would where would you have me, Carmen? There's so much you can do to build your book, to build your portfolio, and to shoot stuff that you aspire to shoot. Don't show work that you don't want to get more of. What you show more of, and what you show that you're capable of, that's what you're gonna get hired for. Right. If you show a little bit of everything, then the client's not going to know what you're good at or think you're not good at anything really, yeah. even though you might be really good at something. If you show other things, they're going to get confused. Know what you love to shoot and shoot more of that and try and shoot that to the best of your ability and build that book and really shoot what you aspire to get hired for. 
And I think the personal work thing is, is important too. I've gotten a lot of good feedback from my personal work, more so than like my portfolio, because okay. the portfolio is, you show that to clients and that instills confidence in them and it shows them that you're capable of executing a brief and technically, you know, mm. creating something. But your personal work is something that only you uniquely can offer. It's, it's a perspective, it's, yeah. it's a vision, it's a style. Don't stress so much about creating stuff that you see out there. It's good if you can do that because it means you're technically proficient and you understand the market. But also, you know, everyone's a creative and the people that you're working with are creative too. And if they're seeing stuff in your portfolio that they already see on a billboard and in a million other people's portfolios, how does that set you apart from another photographer? Right. If you're all technically sound, why would they choose you? It's, it's personality, it's like, you know, your vibe, it's the way that you direct people. And if they don't get that right off the bat, like if they've never worked with you before, then it's personal work, right? This is my first time trying to model for someone. I haven't, can't say this is. <laughs> what? <laughs> Warren's modeling debut. Yeah. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the episode. Really sorry about the really bad audio here and there. That's the only setup I have with that camera and that mic. Um, but I'm a one man band and this is kind of the most uh, I could pull off uh, by myself. I, mean, I, could, I could have done better, but we had some time constraints here and there. So if you're a photographer or just starting out, or maybe just wanting to test the waters into the photography world, uh, hopefully this episode has given you a little bit of advice and some insight into basically uh, what you might need to take into account, what might come your way and what you might want to think about during your journey as a photographer. But that's about it. Um, I'm sorry again for the really bad audio before. I've just got myself um, a Rode mic, thanks to Locke. But as you can hear and you can probably tell, I still have a Canon 100D. And that isn't really going away anytime soon uh, because I am can't really afford it right now. I spend most of my money on storage systems uh, and other equipment and gear. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'm sorry this took so long, but I'm in the middle of trying to do stuff like freelance edits and freelance gigs. Uh, obviously they pay, and this YouTube thing, it doesn't pay at all. Um, thank you again. I'm gonna try my best to work hard around the clock to finish my day job and then come back to this and finish my YouTube job. <laughs> that makes sense. But stay tuned, I've got some exciting stuff uh, to announce to you guys but that will be in the next few episodes so expect one out once every roughly two weeks once every two weeks I think that's enough lead time for me to really prepare enough footage and create a half decent episode anyway thanks again for watching cheers <laughs>